Hello dear children, welcome back to your chemistry class. So today we are going to begin with the third chapter that is elements, compounds and mixtures. You have already studied in your class 6 about elements, compounds and mixtures. So today we will have a revision of what we, you have already studied in your class 6. We know that all the substances that are present will make up the universe. So all the substances that are present around us will make up the universe or otherwise we say that everything that is present around us including both the living things and non-living things is called as a matter. So all these substances that are present around us are classified into two broad categories that is pure substances and impure substances. Pure substances are again classified as elements and compounds while impure substances, otherwise mixtures, are classified as homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. Elements are further classified as metals, non-metals, metalloids and noble gases. So before we go in to see what are these pure substances and impure substances, let us have a quick look at what is an atom. We have already learned that atom is the basic unit or the smallest particle that is present in an element. Also, we know that an atom is not capable of independent existence. Or otherwise we say that they are the building blocks of all the matter. An atom consists of nucleus, protons, neutrons, electrons and orbits. As you can see in the picture here, nucleus is the center of the atom which consists of positively charged particles called as protons and particles that do not carry any charge which are called as neutrons. Orbit is an imaginary path that is surrounding the nucleus. And negatively charged particles as you can see here called as electrons are revolving around these nucleus in this imaginary path that is orbits. So this is a three dimensional representation of an atom. As you can see nucleus is at the center of the atom which consists of positively charged particles called as protons and Particles that do not carry any charge called as neutrons. And orbits surround the nucleus where the negatively charged particles called electrons are revolving around this nucleus in these orbits. Now let us see what are elements, compounds and mixtures. We have already learned that elements are made up of one kind of atoms or identical atoms. As you see here, an element that is made up of only one kind of atom. And we also know that it cannot be broken down. As you see in the picture here, this is an example of an element that is potassium. So, this element potassium consists of only potassium particles, isn't it? So we say that it is made up of one kind of atom. And if you try to divide this element potassium into any number of small pieces and if we take any of these small pieces and if we look at that, again it is made up of that same kind of atoms. And therefore we can say that an element cannot be broken down because how much ever you try to break it down, Finally, what you end up is at the same element that is potassium. So now let us see what are compounds. Compounds are made up of two or more different elements. And also it can be broken down unlike elements. 
you can see an example of potassium chloride. This is a compound. It is made up of two different elements that is potassium and chlorine. But if we try to break this compound potassium chloride, what we finally get is that two different elements. That is, it can be broken down into simpler substances. And these simpler substances are elements. And these elements are potassium and chlorine. Therefore, we can say that compounds are made up of two or more different elements. And also, it can be broken down into simpler substances called as elements. Now we will see what are mixtures. Mixtures are made up of two or more substances that are mixed in any proportion. Or otherwise we say that mixtures are formed when two or more substances will exist together without any kind of chemical force that is acting between these substances. And it is also noted that in case of mixtures, the substances will retain their properties. Let's take the example of a mixture. As you can see here in the picture, these are substances that are mixed together in any proportion. As you can see, these substances will retain their properties. Let's take the example of groundnut. Groundnut, when it is mixed along with other substances, it is not going to change its property. That means it is not going to change its taste. So we can say that likewise each of these substances will retain its original property. Mixtures are further classified as heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. Now what is a homogeneous mixture? A homogeneous mixture can either be a solid, a liquid or a gaseous mixture that has got same composition and a uniform appearance throughout the sample. Homo means same. While in case of heterogeneous mixtures, this has got varying proportion or otherwise they have different composition throughout the sample. Now let's take the example of homogeneous mixture. As you can see in the picture here, this is a cup of tea. This is made up of different substances like water, tea powder, sugar and also milk. But here we see that it has got a same composition throughout the sample and also it has got a uniform appearance. Therefore, we say that these are homogeneous mixtures. Another example is potassium chloride that is mixed with water. Now, what happens when we mix potassium chloride with water? Potassium chloride easily dissolves in water. So, in that case also, we find that there is a same composition that is present in this solution of potassium chloride in water. And also it is noted that it has got a uniform appearance after we mix it. And therefore this is also an example of a homogeneous mixture. While in case of heterogeneous mixture, we know that it has got varying proportion or otherwise they have got a different composition throughout the sample. Or otherwise we can also uh, visibly make out a difference between the substances that are present. Hetero means different. Let's take the example of oil that is mixed with water. We know that when oil is mixed with water, it has got a different composition or otherwise a varying proportion because this is not uniform throughout or it does not have a uniform appearance. This is because oil is present in more amount in some places while at some other places we see that oil is in less amount. So we can easily make out a difference between the substances in this case. 
and therefore we say that it is an example of a heterogeneous mixture. Same is the case of potassium chloride that is mixed with sodium chloride. When potassium chloride is mixed with sodium chloride, we can visibly make out a difference be between these two. And also it will not have a uniform appearance throughout because they have got different composition or they are mixed in varying proportions. In this case of potassium chloride and sodium chloride, we can separate these two substances by any kind of physical methods. So always it has to be noted that in case of mixtures, the constituents can be separated using various physical methods. So these are the examples of homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures.